This week, my children and I are diving into the world of bees, specifically honeybees. I'm Julia. Thanks for joining me on my channel, sharing the discovery. This inspiration to learn more about bees, it comes from God's World News. The parent-teacher guide suggested that we go a bit deeper into learning about honeybees, and so I've gathered some resources and gathered some activity ideas, and I wanted to do a video where I do a little snippet each day based on what we did that day, every day this week. I knew that pulling out Winnie the Pooh would grab my children's interest, and of course Winnie the Pooh is known for his love of honey. Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree. The next book we looked at was A Bee's Life, which is a wonderful little introduction to the life cycle of a bee. It has great photographs, really close-up pictures that detail um, life within a hive. It gives a great overview of different um, roles that are that happen within the hive, the queen bee, the worker bees, the drone bees, etc. When I was in high school, I did a whole report on honeybees. So I had a bit of background knowledge that I was able to add to the minimal sentences that were in this book. So we actually talked a bit about um, the queen bee. Um, and I knew that queen bees, if there are two different um, queen bees that hatch at the same time, they will actually fight each other and to see who is the stronger one. And um, the other one, it, I think, is either killed or actually will take part of the hive and form a new colony. So even though I hadn't planned on doing this, I actually pulled out another book that I had, which is called Queen Spotting. Meet the Remarkable Queen Bee. This book gives you a queen spotting challenge. Can you see the queen? And in this one, I'll tell you. It's right here. See the large bee right there. So there are some fold out pictures. It can be really hard to distinguish sometimes, but like this one, I think the queen bee is right there. I don't know if you can see that. There is an answer key at the end where it shows in all of the pictures where the queen is. Um, so this is a really fun, um, very educational resource. And obviously this is meant for older children and adults, not for younger children like mine. So we didn't actually read anything in here aside from looking for the queen. And the last book we read today was called The Bee Tree. This is in the Sunlight Curriculum and it's recommended by a couple other quality resources and I can see why. This is a story about a little girl named Mary Ellen who hunts for a bee tree with her grandpa. And along the way um, there are people that they meet who join their bee hunting party and at the end it it proves to be a wonderfully enriching um, time for the community and for Mary Ellen. You'll have to read the book to find out why. My two oldest children are here with me now um, and they're playing with matchbox cars. So if you hear noises, you can know that that's them. We started off um, the day looking at our God's Big World pamphlet. So here is um, a photo of a bee hive or a collection of bee hives in Israel and it's robotic and it studies the pests and diseases that um, affect honeybees. Hearing that this robot um, beehive collection of beehives here is equipped to look for diseases and pests in the honeybees and actually administer medicine um, and study um, why bees might be dying because this is a worldwide problem. Um, that started the conversation in on what actually is the plight of honeybees. In the stack of books that I had ordered from the library, I did have a book 
set aside in that stack. What if there were no bees? Now this is not one of the books that I had set aside last night. Pulling this book out, um, instead of going with the resources that I had set aside to do today, is an example of how I let the conversation lead the activities and the books that we choose to do within the day. This book really um, takes the very complex um, relationship of ecosystems and all of the food chain players and puts it in um, a simple format, accessible format. It does great with these illustrations of like blacking out the B and then the other things that would be affected as a, as a consequence. So this book, I would say, makes that topic really accessible to children. This next book is called The Honey Bee and the Robber. And again, this was not one of the books I had set aside last night, but it seemed to fit in well with the whole hive in danger kind of a theme. This is a library book, so not all of the tabs were working, but the tabs that did work were a lot of fun. Kids had a lot of fun pulling them down and playing with them. And it's, oh, this is, this was a fun one. I think this was probably my favorite one. Anyway, so this makes a really fun interactive um, story. <laughs> the last thing that we did today was I had purchased an interactive set that you will see now. Just to close off, this day has been a prime example of how I can plan things and kind of think I have an idea about what we're going to be looking at in the day and then how just one piece of material can cause us to ask questions and to start going um, down another path um, than I had originally thought we would. And just how that's okay. <laughs> that is okay. And um, if you have the resources available in that moment, it's great to pull that out. And that's what allows it to be a different path. Or if you don't, then you can just say, we're going to stick with what we've got planned and I'm going to get some more resources that we can keep looking into that. Um, so it's just a, a great example of how the conversation can lead, the interest can lead, and it can be a very memorable and enjoyable time of learning together as a family. Looks like my daughter's coming to join me here. So we'll go over together what we did for school this morning. Sound good? Hello again. I'm here. It's about 10 o'clock at night after discovering through editing the videos that I took earlier today that I lost some of the content. I must not have clicked um, record on some of the content. And so I figured I might as well just do it all over. So here we are. Let's dive into it. This morning, the first thing we did was we pulled out our calendar that had November at the top. So we changed it all over to reflect the December calendar. And that started us off this morning. From there, I decided to go with the monthly theme, the season theme, and read the year at Maple Hill Farm. Now, this is a book that I have referred to in another video about the Oxcart Man, part two, um, which I will try to link down below. And this goes through the months of the year on the farm and talks about how the animals and all of the life around the farm adapts to the changing of the seasons. There is a part in it about honeybees. There was one page about bees um, and their work on the farm. Um, so I thought that that would be a great segue into our honeybee portion of the day. 
We um, read this book, The Life and Times of the Honey Bee, which is a wonderful resource. Let me just show you a couple examples of the pictures in here. So you can see um, it details all the different kinds of honey or some of the different kinds of honey throughout the world um, based on the different flowers that bees um, collect their nectar from. It talks about the busy days of the house bee and what each of their tasks might be on a given day. And the part that I thought was super fun because it tied in with the year at Maple Hill Farm. It's a calendar of honeybee life. So we are able to look at each of the seasons, each of the months of the year that we are learning about in other um, ways. And we're able to learn about it from the honeybee's perspective, which was pretty fascinating. This book was another um, great book um, that my librarian had picked out for us. Um, Let's Explore Honey and great big photographs and, um, you know, short sentences and paragraphs together um, documenting the life of the honeybee as well, um, but really highlighting honey. And it, the book has a little idea for an activity in the back, which I have collected the supplies for, and I'm thinking that we'll probably do that craft. I had pulled this book out initially because I planned that we could make some honey Christmas cookies today. So it seemed like we should learn a little bit more about honey. These honey Christmas cookies are actually Ben Franklin's um, favorite Christmas cookie, apparently. So there you go, bringing a little history into our uh, honey bee journey. The last book that we read is Honey Bee's Busy Day. Now, this book was really fun. When I um, opened this up, I don't know if you can see the dots, and it's almost like you can, you know, make your finger move on the dots where the honeybee is going and follow the honeybee on all her errands to different flowers as she passes the ducks. Ah, you can see that it's just like such a fun ah, little book. Now, there were these little flaps here, these little openings here, and I'm like, what's that? What's that about? <laughs> I didn't really know. Anyway, we got to the end of the book, and then we discovered there's a little pocket back here with a little laminated honeybee. And this book just went to a whole new level. The honeybee's buzzing, and then slipping through the page, turn the page, the honeybee's there on the, other, the next page. And slipping through the next page. This is just a real gem. Um, Here he goes. You, you want a chance to take a book to, to catch a fly? No thanks. Did you? Where is it? Where's the open side? Is it over here? I think it goes here to the next page, right? No, I just press it. After reading all these books, we embarked on our big project for the day, partly to celebrate the fact that it was December 1st, we're starting a new month, and obviously Christmas is approaching, so it kind of brought in that Christmassy theme, but also it remained consistent with our honey theme, and we started making Ben Franklin's favorite Christmas honey cookies.
all of the days so far this week, we've been home all day. And that has given us the time and the space to really focus on our school and learning. And today was a little different. This afternoon was completely full of different errands. So we only had the morning hours. So instead of focusing on a lot of reading or um, book work of any sort, we did a couple crafts and activities together. In the evenings before the children go to bed, we have our family prayer time together. And then the children each get to pick a children's book that we read together before they go to bed. And so tonight, completely without planning it, my daughter chose a story about a bee. Even though this wasn't um, one of our school books, it was just a fun little tie-in, a fun story. This is from the um, Usborne Phonics stories, Cow Takes a Bow, and Other Tales. And it's the story of Bee Makes Tea. And it's a pretty fun story, and this Usborne Phonics series is all about rhyming and using words that sound similar with um, like um, the same sound in the beginning of the word as well as the ending of the words. I know there's a special name for that, but I can't think of what it is right now. Um, but two take the milk, three take the pot. Look out, calls B, that tea is hot. So that's kind of the nature of, of how the story goes. It's in rhyme form. So today was our last day of school for the week and also our last day journeying with learning about honeybees. We had such a fun week. Honestly, my kids and I both enjoyed um, all of the resources and activities that we did. And in fact, when I finished reading the last of the three honeybee books that I had set aside to be read today, my kids um, both asked me, are there more? Can there be more? <laughs> Anyway, I think that's a good sign that we were able to engage in the topic, enjoy the topic, and even over dinner this evening, we talked about what kind of bee we would like to be in the hive if we had a choice, a drone bee, a worker bee, the queen bee, etc., which was a really neat discussion. The last three books that we read, The Bee Tree is a story that is based on real live people that is set in the country of Malaysia. This book includes um, some really great detail about um, honey gatherers and the um, process that they use in order to gather the honey. It has a bit of um, like legends in it and, and a folk tale about um, the honeybee and honey collecting and, um, and a really great relational story um, um, and also a communal story. So I highly re recommend this book. Um, both of my children seem to engage with the storyline and engage with um, the themes present in this story. Another book we read tonight is The Honeybee Man, which was so fun to follow up with this book after reading about the bee tree, which obviously took place in, in Asia, in a country in Asia. And The Honeybee Man is more similar to what we might know here, except he lives in the city. So yes, it's in America, but um, we live in the country. So we're not... Um, so used to city life. So even though it's in America, um, his life and where he has his hives up on his roof um, is a little bit foreign to us. And the way that this gentleman beekeeper, his name is Fred, the way he takes care of his bees, the way he interacts with his bees is just a joy and a delight. And then his joy and delight over 
being able to harvest his honey, his gratefulness to the bees, and then his tasting. What does he taste in his honey? Like what kind of flowers did his bees harvest from? And this is just a great, great story, um, the honeybee man. And we ended off our honeybee <laughs> journey with um, this book called The Flight of the Honeybee. And I thought this was going to be pretty basic. In fact, I prefaced the book by saying, guys, we may be reading a lot of um, the same things that we've already read before. So if it feels like it's a little bit redundant, we can, you know, we don't have to finish it. But um, it follows this little bee who they name Scout. And off to, she's like the first one to go out from her hive and discover where the fall flowers are blooming and uh, she has to avoid some mishaps. There's a bird um, seeking to devour her. She is able to find the flowers and then come back to the hive. Oh, and then there's a wasp attacking the hive and he has to be um, taken down. Um, anyway, so it's it's um yes there is a lot of like the same like similar themes and information in it um that we had read in other books but it was in story form again like i think the idea of story really brings it home in a way that just gathering facts um can't um because story form is much more accessible it's much more ingestible you can receive it um into your heart um and into your consciousness in a way that you can't just uh, digest facts. So that was um, the last um, book that we read on this honeybee journey. Um, the only last thing that um, we did today was we made some honey muffins, which are absolutely delicious. And I made them today ahead of time because um, on Saturdays we actually have a breakfast meal for our dinner time. So we're going to share those muffins together for our breakfast meal tomorrow evening. So I will post the recipe down below if anyone's interested in giving it a try. Um, but otherwise, um, that closes off our week. I will say that even though it's been such a fun week, it has felt like a very busy week. We haven't gone out many places, but every school day we have kind of filled with activity and with book reading and um, with dialogue about honeybees. So I just want to state that next week is not nearly as full of school. I'm not planning to do like a whole unit study like this for at least um, a little while. Um, I'm not quite sure when it will come up next, but certainly the month of December I'm now kind of easing into the holiday uh, holiday flow. We'll certainly keep doing school probably even in the week of, of Christmas as well, but it's not going to be as um, high energy and um, intensely packed as this week has been for us. Thanks for joining us and I hope that you can get inspiration for taking on your own unit study, your own week-long journeys into a certain topic and um, involving your kids and journeying with them into learning about something new.